Revolutionary English physicist, mathematician, and philosopher Sir Isaac Newton is perhaps the most famous scientist in history. Born to a farmer in 1642, Newton worked his way through school waiting tables and cleaning wealthier students' rooms. He went to university at Cambridge, where he would eventually earn a professorship. During the Great Plague in 1665, Cambridge shut down and Newton returned home. It was during this hiatus that he first conceived the method of infinitesimal calculus, began to theorize the laws of planetary motion, and started his work with light and color. Though his discoveries would change the world of science, he didn't care about the glory and fame that came with them. He wasn't too concerned with publishing it, making it available to other people, uh, getting glory for his own sake. He was an intellectual challenge that he wanted to deal with. Every discovery that Newton made had two aspects. First, Newton made the discovery, and second, other people had to discover that he had made the discovery. In 1671, Newton demonstrated his revolutionary reflecting telescope for the Royal Society, and soon after published his notes on color, describing his research on optics. After a visit from Royal Society member Edmund Haley, encouraging Newton to prove Robert Hooke's hypothesis on planetary motion, Newton wrote his Principia, which introduced his three laws of motion and first described the idea of gravity. Newton's Principia is generally reckoned to be the single most important scientific book ever written, because for the first time, it set forth a working, quantitative, exact, mathematical system based upon experiment and critical observation. His work made him very popular and led Newton to being elected to Parliament. After several years in London, Newton suffered a nervous breakdown. Though he came out of it, his interest in physical science was replaced with philosophy and alchemy, particularly how they both related to a higher power. Alchemy was concerned with manipulating what were seen to be four elemental properties in nature, the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, and realizing that these things made all substances, that you could therefore not only make any other substance, such as gold, but you could also somehow learn the secrets by which God had put the world together. Newton's later years were spent less in science and more as a public figure. Upon Robert Hooke's death in 1703, Newton became president of the Royal Society, though he didn't get along with many of its members and made many enemies. Newton spent his final years a wealthy and famous man whose discoveries made enormous impact on society. In the century that came after Newton, the 1800s, we find that the fascination with science, with order, and with reasoned knowledge really set the whole tone of that culture. The one single figure from whom they drew most deeply was, in fact, Isaac Newton.